Step 7. Skin the arms near the shoulders, starting on the outside of the arm and working around to the front. Repeat for the other arm. Step 8. Skin the neck. By this time the hide should be completely shed. Remove the innards of the beast. You will need to first separate the large intestine from the body and tie it off, then remove the penis if it's a male you are butchering, then continue with the removal of the rest of the internal organs, following these 9 steps. First step is to lower the animal so that you can work comfortably on the rear end of it. The second step is to cut around the anus with a short, pointed knife, being very careful not to make any holes in the intestine, as that could contaminate the meat. This anal area is known as the bung. With step 3 you pull the bung out slightly or enough that you can tie it off. Unless you know your knots and can make a slip knot prior to pulling it out, you may need a helper to hold the rectum as you tie it off. Step 4 is simple. If the animal is male, cut out the penis before slicing through the belly. Step 5 is to cut down the belly, cutting from the inside out, working your way down from the scrotal area to the sternum. Use your other hand to hold the innards away from the point of the knife, cutting through the belly fat as you go. Step 6. Place a large container underneath to catch the guts, as by now they would be bulging out of the body. Step 7. Cut through the fat surrounding the innards and sever any tissue that connects innards to the back of the abdominal cavity. Pull the bung through to the inside of the cavity then out through the slit made to access the internal organs. Take your time separating the intestines from the cavity since you don't want to spill the contents into the carcass. Also be careful to not rupture the bladder. The eighth step is pulling the intestines and bladder out of the body, as well as the stomach since it should also be free by now too. Reach in and down to lift it all out into the container, severing the remaining flesh and connective tissue connecting the stomach to the body cavity. This includes severing the esophagus from the stomach at the point where it goes through the diaphragm. If there are some innards that you want to keep, you'll want to get a separate keeper bowl to put them in. This would include the kidneys and liver. The kidneys should be removed after the intestines are taken out, as well as the abdominal fat that can be cut up and fed to the chickens or dogs, if you have any. Remove the liver and place it in the bowl along with the kidneys. The last step is to cut out the diaphragm and remove the heart and lungs. To do this you need to grasp the heart and lungs and pull forward and downward, cutting the large blood vessel attached to the backbone. You should be able to remove the heart and lungs with the esophagus and trachea attached. You will need to sever the connective tissue between them if you want to keep the heart along with the liver and kidneys. You may need to squeeze the heart a bit to get any blood out that may have not been completely pumped out. You should inspect the offal to see if there are any abnormalities that may affect the quality of the meat. If you're not sure what to look for, it may be best to get a large animal veterinarian out to do the post-mortem inspection for you. Now it's time to split the carcass in half. Start by sawing through the sacral vertebrae from the inside and the cartilage that joins the pelvic bone. As soon as the pelvic area is cut through you can saw from the back but some prefer to keep sawing through the back since the vertebrae is much easier to see in the front than the back, especially if the big foot has a lot of back fat. Continue sawing to the neck. Cut down through the center of the brisket to cut the rib cage in half. You should consider splitting the carcass into quarters to handle the carcass a bit easier. Cut between the 10th and 11th rib, and leave the 11th rib intact to allow air to circulate over the kidney knob and prevent bacterial growth if additional hanging time is needed. Clean the carcass with cold water to wash any excess blood and dirt off. You may have to trim any soiled, bruised or bloodied pieces of flesh off as well. Hang the carcass to age it. How long to age depends on the air temperature, fat covering and desired flavor. Most should hang the carcass to age for 5 to 7 days some say two weeks, longer if aging is done during the colder conditions and if there's more fat on the carcass. If the carcass is entirely covered in fat then it is recommended to hang longer than 10 days. A good way to tell if you have the meat aging at the right temperature is if the temperature of the round, the hind quarter, and other thick parts are lowered to 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 to 7 degrees Celsius, within 24 hours after slaughter. Hang the carcass in an area where strange or bad odors will not be absorbed and do not exist. Odors like manure, gas, 
paint, gasoline, diesel or musty odors can be readily absorbed by the carcass. The hanging area should be cool, dry, dust-free, odor-free and relatively sterile. If you think something is missing or should have been done differently, leave a comment.